Today we're going to learn how to use moving lights and shadows in After Effects in the 2.5D mode. We don't need any assets for this because we'll create them all in After Effects. So let's start by creating a new composition. We will call it Moving Lights and your name. And then we'll make it four seconds long, 1080p. Then we will click on this 8 bits per channel and we'll turn our color channel depth to 32 bits and that will blend the grays uh, much better in After Effects. Now we will click inside our composition and we will make our first layer. We'll make a solid layer. Um, we want to make a pumpkin so go ahead and put the slider in the pumpkin area. Pick a nice pumpkin color. Let's hit scale and let's make it 200% and let's make it 2.5D. Now we'll scale down the material options and we want to make sure that it casts shadows and make sure that it accepts shadows so those two should be on. With that done let's we want to make five cop a total of five layers of this so I'm going to hit command D four times and now let's rename these layers. So I'm going to highlight the top one, I'm going to hit return, and we'll name this one Floor. The next one we will rename le Left. Next one we will rename Right. Next one we will rename Back. And the last one we'll call it Table. Alright, so let's turn off everything but the top layer. Roll down the transform properties and we want to rotate its X 90 degrees and then we will just grab make sure that we've got the arrow on and we will grab and drag that down until it fills the bottom of the frame. Alright, we'll lock that layer. Let's turn on the next layer. We will set its Y rotation to 90 degrees and we will set its position, the X, to zero. We'll lock that and fold it up. We'll go to right. We'll set its Y rotation to 90 degrees. And we will set its X position to 1920. And if we turn on the eyeball, we'll see that it's moved over there. All right, so we'll fold that up lock it, turn on the back wall, and here let's, um, to see this, let's turn on two views horizontal. If we click in the right view, we want it to say active camera. That's what's going to look like when it renders. If we, when we turn on the left side, we want it to be top. And so we will select the back wall, and we will push it back. the top of our comp. Okay. And so that looks good. So now we've got a room. I'm going to uh, let's shrink this by to 25%. And so we see that we've got walls, a back wall, and a floor. Okay. Now let's take our table turn that on and let's actually lock that back wall let's set its scale to 50 percent and we want to rotate its X position 90 degrees And let's drag it down so that we can see the top of it a little bit better in perspective. All right. Now let's create a light. Go to Layers, New, Light. Let's pick an ambient light. We will set the intensity at 50%. 
and that will kind of give us a, a, a working light to work with. I'm going to lock the table. We'll just drag the light down there. Now let's create a new light, layer new light, and this time we'll create a spotlight. And we want to set the intensity to 100%. We want the cone angle set at 81, and we want the cone feather set at 50. And we want this one to cast shadows. And let's set shadow darkness at 65%, and shadow diffusion at 200 pixels. All right, now we're casting a light. Now let's position it where we want it to be. We will, oh, that's the ambient. Okay, so let's, actually let's name this spotlight. So we keep that straight. And this one we will call fill. Fill light. Okay, so let's twirl down our properties for our spotlight. And we want to set our point of interest positions at 960, 540, and minus 120. We want to set our positions at 960, minus 280, and minus 120. And now we're casting a nice shadow. I'm going to actually unlock my table, move it up a little farther. That looks cool. All right, lock that up again so we don't accidentally mess with it. And now we're going to set uh, three keyframes. So we are going to keyframe orientation. And so we will set the Y rotation in orientation. We'll set that at minus 18. And we will keyframe that. Then we will go to second two on the timeline. And we will set the orientation to 18. And then we will go to sec to the end of the comp, second four, and we'll select our first uh, keyframe, command copy, command C, and command paste, command V. And then let's ram uh, do the RAM preview and see what it looks like. So that looks pretty good. We're casting a good shadow on the floor and on our side walls. I would actually like to have a little more um, light on the back wall, but I don't want to move my light, so let's move the wall. So let's click on back wall, we'll unlock it, and we will just drag it forward a little bit. Okay. I like the way that looks better. Now. Let's see what happens if we turn off the fill light. It's a little too dark and moody. So what we'll do is we'll go down in the fill light and let's change the intensity to 25%. See if that looks better. Uh, let's try 35. All right. I like the way that looks. And now one last thing, and this is actually going to slow down our, our render a great deal. Let's unlock our table. And let's twirl down, um, let's hit P, and we will hold down Option, the Option button, and we will click the stopwatch, and what we're going to do is we're going to open up an expression in the positions. And then what I want you guys to do is, this is, we're going to, I'm going to copy and paste this expression into here.
and okay. And so it needs to look exactly like this: value plus, and this is the square bracket zero comma index comma zero square bracket no spaces at all. And what and what we're going to do with this now that it's in here is we're going to try to create a 3D looking table so it's not quite so skinny. So I'm going to copy this 19 times. And with that expression, it's basically moving each layer one pixel. And so we'll have a nice fat looking table. And go ahead and render this as a uh, 1080p Apple ProRes light file and post it to D2L.